guys welcome back to my channel um so like i said in the last video i'm going to be using my laptop to record this particular um video and potentially the next two or three and that's because i particularly want to show the process as i talk about it so first things first welcome back thank you for those of you who have watched the last video I have received a ton of questions, um, redirected most of them back here. But for those who still um, feel like they want to ask more questions, remember you can always reach me on Instagram at Amaka NJ. Um, I actually got an email, surprisingly. So yeah, there's an email link to that account, Amaka NJ, or Moments with So, or if you feel like it's going to be very hands-on or you want very hands-on help or support then you could reach me on my super prof platform at sophie the link as well would be in the description so welcome back guys if you're new here thank you for joining us for the first time if you are a returning subscriber thank you very much so please um like this video click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification as well so that you will be the first to know when you videos it out all right guys um so basically um, in this series, I am going to be talking about the UK FPO Foundation program and trying to simplify the process. I decided to do this because I had a really horrible experience when trying to apply. I did not have any information. Um, I, I knew about the website, I knew about where to look, but a lot of it wasn't, there wasn't, there wasn't anybody to ask questions to. Um, and that you would know once you set the process, you know about the help desk. They weren't always very helpful. Sometimes they would just copy and paste the same information on the website. So that resulted in um, me being screened out of the application my first time. Um, Second time I had another near miss um, and lost out on the, uh, you know, starting the foundation program. And then thankfully I eventually got in. So uh, it was a really horrible experience. And I would really love um, that less and less people obviously have to go through that. So yeah, that was the aim of this series. So today we're going to be talking about the eligibility process. Basically the eligibility process is the process that the UKFP would use to assess you, an IMG, or um, people who graduated from the UK Medical University prior to, I think it's um, for more than a year or a year and above, I think, yeah. So for those, for example, who would have graduated um, last year, they would also need to go through the eligibility process. So it's for anybody who did not go to UK Medical University and for anybody who um, graduated from a UK Medical University more than a year ago. I definitely have to double check that. Um, but yeah, so majority, basically, let's just say if you're not a UK Medical graduate for the year 2021, you would very likely have to go through the eligibility process. And this process aims to see like the name, if you are eligible to apply. Now, passing the eligibility process does not mean you're guaranteed a spot. It doesn't mean that you get to start the, the um, actual foundation program. It's just the first step. So my aim today is to try and make sure you increase the chance of actually passing that step. Now, um, in my first experience, I was screened out at the eligibility phase because of some really, in retrospect, annoying, and dumb mistakes. Now, I think it's annoying on two sides, <laughs> but I'm just going to go into details now so I don't keep rambling. Um, now, in my list, the first thing I want to talk about is what is going to be your main reference during this process. Now, for the whole of the UK uh, um, um, application process, your first point of call should be the UKFPO website. Now, um, when I was applying, I would, for the application that I did, I finally got in. So um, I knew about a couple of people that were screened out for perhaps taking someone's advice or doing something that is clearly stated on the website. Don't be that person. So if you want to, um, your very first point of call 
always, always, always go to the UK FPOS. I'm going to, once I start sharing my screen, I'm going to show you guys what that looks like. So the UK FPO websites. Um, another port of call that you would need to go to um, occasionally as you go through the process, the GMC website. So you want to read about guide, um, guidelines and things like that, but that'll be for another video. Um, then the UK FPO thankfully now have a phone number. I think the very first time I applied, they did not have one. But for this year, I don't know if it's because of COVID, they actually do have a phone number right now. Um, I probably would attach that in the description box. So yeah, your point of call would be the UK FPO website. Always check that. Always. No excuses. The GMC website as well. And of course, you could come to ask me questions. Now, things change. Okay, um, regularly. So I might not have the most up to date information, which is why I say always refer to the UKFP website. All right, so that's where your references. Um, how do you reach them, basically? So if you want to talk to them, you'd also need to reach them at their email address, which is help desk. Um, just give me one second, I will check my phone. So I type it out here, or I call it out as it is. So it's the help helpdesk.fpo helpdesk.fpo and that is helpdesk at foundationprogram.nhs.uk so I will leave that out here when I'm doing my editing so helpdesk at foundationprogram.nhs.uk so that is the email address that you need to have and that's where you'll be sending your questions now um, a lot of us complain because they weren't always very very helpful Sometimes you'd um, whoever you reach out to might just copy and paste something from the website, but they are still your first port of call. All right. Um, now let's go to the actual process. What do you need to do? Now the window for this year opens on the fourteenth of July, meaning that we have less than um, a month, and it closes on the fourth of August. Now these guys are super super strict with deadlines, meaning that if you are one minute late, I kid you not, one minute late, you are out. They do not play with deadlines. So that means you need to get everything you need, submit, click, save, whatever you need to do, as and when do. Um, one of the first things you're going to need to do when you start the process is open an Oriel account. I'm just going to put the website there. I'm not really going to go into details of Oriel today, but you need to open an Oriel account. And that is usually where you would submit your documents to and where you would um, get information from the UKFP. So you'd open your Oriel account and then you start your process. Now for the eligibility process itself, the main things you need to have are something called the Dean Statement. And I will review the Dean Statement with you later on in this video. You need to have your degree certificate, or if you've not graduated yet, or you don't have your certificate, that's still fine. You would need to provide um, some letters, a um, couple of letters, I think one or two from your Dean, um, alongside your Dean Statements to show that you are going to be um, a graduate before the foundation program starts next year. And then very, very important, you need to have your IELTS um, certificate submitted by that time. Now, funny mistakes people make that I made, I, I made. Now, the first time I did mine, <laughs> I did not submit a, um, an IELTS certificate. Well, actually, I submitted one, it was an old one because I didn't know. Now, the IELTS certificate you have will need to be valid when you start next year. So if you have an IELTS result or OET, whichever one you want to write that you've had for like two years or three years, it will not be valid. And it will potentially lead to you being screened out. So you need a current IELTS certificate, which will still be valid at the time of starting. So if you are hoping to start in August, 2022, your certificate has to be valid by then. That's number one. Another thing is English is my first language and it wasn't enough. Apparently, whether you're British or you are um, American or wherever you, you come from an English speaking country, 
um, that's not enough <laughs> for some reason. So I think the only people who were exempt were people who were able to prove with their dean statements that they studied English, um, studied their uh, medical degree in English. But at the same time, these people had to be from a pre-approved list of schools. I will show you that list as we go as well. So that means that whether you're a Brit, you were Irish, you were Australian, you, yeah, you would still have to write the IELTS in a lot of cases. If you're lucky enough that your school is not on that list and it could be approved that English is your first language, then you're fine. You, you wouldn't need to provide um, the IELTS certificate. But I feel like everybody should probably still do one because in many cases, um, in some other cases, you might be required by the GMC to provide one. Now, with the GMC, I think they're a bit more lenient, even in even um, when it comes to what's it called, the Court of Mac. So this is also lower than the UKFP. So with the um, GMC, you would need to provide your IELTS certificate as well for a lot of people. If you don't come from a primarily English-speaking country, I think. Um, I'm a bit rusty on the edges um, with that information. But yeah, most people would need to take the IELTS, as I'm trying to say. And it doesn't always depend on your nationality. It depends on where you actually had your medical school in. OK. All right. So moving on. Um, so just in summary, what you would need to have, you would need to have your dean statement and it must be the dean statement for the year. Now, funny thing I think happened the first time I applied. Um, number one. <laughs> I did not. So I submitted um, an outdated um, IELTS certificate, outdated because it was not going to be valid at the time of start of F1. Um, I think I also did not give a dean statement. Now, that was very foolish of me. But remember that I said I didn't have anybody to ask questions and I clearly did not read through or maybe it wasn't available at the time. But everybody needs to have a dean statement. Now, in my case, I was already... I'm a graduate from school so I thought that oh you know what dean statement I'm no longer a student so I don't need a dean statement but I was very wrong and that cost me an application so everybody needs to provide a dean statement um, I'm going to show what the dean statement looks like when I share my screen but key thing to note now the dean statement that you download must be the dean statement from the year you're starting so if you use the dean statement from 2021 or from 2020 it will not be accepted. It's very likely it will not be accepted. So you need to use the present dean statement. It needs to be filled in by your school and it needs to be submitted before the application window closes. Now, some schools give trouble <laughs> with the dean statement and I do not know why. I remember in my first um, one, the school actually made me pay. It was, it was painful. And it was such a hassle. So now that I, I know this is graduation um, season for a lot of schools, so it would be best if you could actually print out, download, and get that done before the schools close. So you minimize any chance of stories because without your dean statement, you already screen out. Now, one good thing about the eligibility program and is that um, process, sorry, is that there's something called the appeal phase. Now in the appeal phase, you get a second chance to sort of bring in some documents or appeal what they said, you know, you did not have. Um, I tried appealing in my case and it did not work for me. So I would advise that you try to do everything right the first time so that you don't even have to, you know, be in that situation. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen now so that we see what I'm talking about here. How do we go about this? Um, so share screen. Yep, there we go. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly run through this and then it would be done. I'm, I'm pretty sure this video has already lasted a lot longer than I would have expected. Okay, so first things first, that's in from the website. Now, this is the website we need to become best friends with, foundationprogram.nhs.uk, the United Kingdom Foundation Program website. So you need to become friends with that website because everything you need is going to be open, and sorry, to be released here. Um, I already mentioned the email address you need to know. Um, now, let's first of all go to the home page, shall we? 
Now, when you go on the website, so foundation program at nhs.uk, you come to the home page. Now you get the news and updates here, but that's not what we're looking for. So look at this section, the key documents and guidance. We are looking to apply for UK FP 2022. So click there and we have information that we need. Now it says the eligibility application window for the UK FP 2022 will open on the 14th, July, 2021. And the national application window for the UK FP 2022 will open on the 8th of September, 2021. So these dates, you need to know them. You need to make sure you stick to them and you do everything they need to do while the dates and the windows are still open because if you do not, you are out. So saying you're out, I should probably explain what that means. If you're out of the process, it means that you're done <laughs> for the year. You need to wait for the next year. It's a very, very, very painful place to be in. Please try to do what you can to make sure that as much as it's in your power, you meet up with all the windows and all the deadlines. Um, another important thing you need to know is what they call the high level timeline. Now, this is basically the timetable of how things would be. I'm not going to um, spend a lot of time explaining this. So uh, let's try and zoom in here. Okay, I can't really zoom in. But again, I showed you how to get there. So just run through and click. So basically here, you're going to see all the dates that you really need to be aware of from when the um, handbook is published to when reserve list allocations will be out. Okay. All right, let's go back again. Now, another thing you need to know about is obviously what we're talking about today, the eligibility process. So you go into programs, then you go into the two-year foundation programs, and then you go into eligibility application. Now here, you get information that you need, including who is meant to be on the list, like I already said, so people who have graduated from a non-UK medical university, if you graduated from a UK medic a medical university prior to the 3rd of um, August so last year, um, if you were a non-UK or non-settled um, worker studying for a UK medical degree at a campus outside of the UK. Um, then you have very, very important, your Dean statement here. Now, I already have that open, so I'll just walk you through and see what that looks like. Oh, no, that's something different. There, oh, no. Okay, I have to move things up. All right, good. So this is the Dean statement, like I already mentioned. So you know how to access it. You need to fill this up. Remember, it must be for the 2022 start, August start. Don't do the 2021. Um, then you print it off, send it to your school, and they fill it out. It's a pretty straightforward form. The only place that might give people difficulties is when it comes to the decile ranking. Now, that is for your school to do. So the, you give it to your school. Basically, what it is is that your school tries to calculate um, your position in your year. So they give an example here. So in a school that had 150 students, if you were the 10th place, for example, that means you'd be in the first decile. So there's a rough example here. So that's your school's job to do. Basically, they're calculating your total, um, your total academic work over the five or six years of your university time. And then they're placing you and they're ranking you. Um, and then they fill in their details and they stamp. So pretty straightforward. So hopefully it's not as tough as it was for me, for people. And make sure you fill that in as well. Um, anything else we need to see here before I log out? Oh yeah, um, I'll probably discuss this a bit more when we go into the application process. I don't know if I'm, I, I've actually said I'll make a video for that, but probably will when the time draws near. Um, so basically, the rankings that they give to you, the decile that I talked about here. So where they rank you in here, the rank, whatever rank that they give to you. So let's say you got put in the second decile or the third decile, all of those will later on be, tran um, be transferred to what is called an EPM. And that EPM would be 
here. So you could get an EPM of 34. So for the, don't worry, when you get into the, um, the system, the process, all these terms become, you become more familiar with them. Yeah. So I think that is all we need to know. Okay, one last thing. So um, for those who think that they don't want to um, write the IELTS, some schools have an exemption and it needs to be on this list. Where's the list? So English language reference from international medical graduates, that's the one. I don't think that's the one. It's not opening up. Um, yeah, well, any, either ways, you could find the information you need here. So basically, your school has to be on a pre-approved list if you want to be exempt from writing the IELTS. Otherwise, you would need to write the IELTS. You need to get 7.5 in each domain in one sitting or um, 400 in each domain in OET also in one sitting. Now, one good thing about the um, UKFP is that you could write any type of IELTS apart from, I think it's called the um, online cryptoed one, where you can write any other type um, of the IELTS, sorry, the IELTS indicator test. That's the only one that's not approved. You can write any other type of IELTS, as long as you get the required score, you're fine. Okay, um, so just in summary, Application window opens on the 14th of July and oh gosh, I'll stop sharing my screen very soon. Um, opens on the 14th of July, closes on the 4th of August, meaning that you need to make sure that you have your Dean Statement, your IELTS certificate and your degree certificate or um, a letter to letter from your Dean showing that you are actually going to be graduating um, before the start of the F1 year. So you need to have all those three things and you would do the whole process on Oriel. So as you start, once the application window opens, everything makes more sense. But your job right now is to make sure that you have your IELTS, you have your Dean Statements and you have preparations for your degree certificate ready before that time comes. Okay. All right, so like I mentioned, if you wanted more of a one-on-one -on -one session, this is where you could reach me at super, um, super Prof. And this is my platform. So all you need to do is you send me a message and then we could book in a slot and we would have a more detailed con um, conversation. If I just stop sharing my screen now. Good. So, um, yeah, that, that is pretty much all that we need to know about eligibility. And now it's it's a very delicate process, a very, it's one that you really need to make sure that you get through because people get screened out from here. So as long as you could just put your best foot forward and try to get in all your documents as uh, and start preparing um, for your documents from now, you hopefully will be fine. So in the next video, I'll probably be talking about um, the exams you need to take. I just realized that I forgot to talk about the application process. Um, I might not have access to that because I don't have the Oriel account, but I would see how to navigate that. But if you have any questions about that, um, let me know. Um, and yeah, I would see you in the next video. The next video should be um, talking about the exams you need to write. So hopefully see you next time have a lovely day if you enjoyed this video you have any questions leave them below you could reach out to me again on a maca nj or on moments with soph if you think you want more hands-on help reach out to me on my super prof um, platform and we could have a consultation scheduled all right, have a lovely day, guys. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to share with anybody you think would need it. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time. Bye.